ECB President Christine Lagarde is in the middle of a full-blown crisis just four months into her job, with investors and businesses counting on her to avoid the worst of the economic damage to come from the coronavirus. So she announced a stimulus package this week, including 120 billion euros in quantitative easing over the rest of the year and ramping up liquidity and lending capacity, but leaving rates where they were. In this week's Contributors Take, Stephanie Flanders, Bloomberg's senior executive editor for economics, takes us through the highs and the lows. Christine Lagarde was very calm and deliberate in her press conference, which was a very uh, unusual one to look at because the room was half empty. I think most of the reporters who were normally there had either not been able to travel to Frankfurt or were working from home and were submitting many of their questions uh, online. But the president of the European Central Bank announced what she called a surgical, comprehensive set of measures to help the Eurozone economy through the impact of the coronavirus. There was a big new long-term lending program for banks, ideally uh, aimed at them helping small and medium-sized businesses affected by the virus. Uh, along with that, there was some word from the regulator side of the ECB that they were going to soften up some of their regulation of banks, perhaps to, to make those banks more relaxed about the impact that that help for small and medium-sized businesses might have on their balance sheets. And you had an expansion of QE, of the uh, bond purchasing program of the European Central Bank, which we think will be oriented towards corporate lending, corporate debt, not uh, government bonds. What you clearly didn't see uh, was the ECB follow the Fed and the Bank of England in cutting the key policy rate, uh, which is already, though, at minus 0.5 percent. That was possibly because they didn't think that would make much difference. Uh, and I think also they would point to the fact that the interest rate on that new lending for banks was actually going to be below the policy rate. It's going to be a quarter of a point below 0.5. Uh, so in a sense, the rate uh, has been cut for that kind of lending. It just hasn't been extended to the rest of the Eurozone economy. You know, investors we saw were not, were not overwhelmed uh, initially by what the ECB had announced, but actually Christine Lagarde herself said the ECB was not the only uh, actor uh, in this story. What was going to be crucial, she repeated, was a coordinated fiscal effort from Eurozone governments to confront this crisis. And I think we've seen that generally, the idea that it, we have to see not just that the grown-ups are in charge, if you like, but that they're really in top of, on top of the kind of micro measures uh, and expenditures that are going to be needed to help cushion the blow of this crisis. Uh, we've seen that a bit from Italy. Uh, the UK had the good luck this week to have a budget schedule for this week, so we've seen a lot of quite decisive fiscal action from the UK. From other governments, and specifically from Germany, not so much. That was a contributor's take from Bloomberg's Stephanie Flanders. We are back now with Bob Diamond and Rick Reeder for more of our roundtable discussion. So, Rick, this was not a bazooka, the word you used, or not shock and awe, <clears throat> some people were doing. Right. Is it enough? So I think, I, I think we're beyond <clears throat> the idea of monetary policy comes to save the day. I mean, I, I think people compare this to the 80s or 90s when interest rates were significantly higher when you move rate down you can have a real effect there's not, interest rates are not symmetric when you reach the lower bound when you get to zero you hurt pension funds insurance companies individuals when you get to negative interest rates <clears throat> so what Christine Lagarde did there were some benefits there the TLTRO was good you're getting at targeted lending which I think is a big deal Listen, I think what you said is right. This has got to get to the fiscal side. This has got to get the only way you're going to get velocity in the system. You need to get innovation. You need to get equity investment, and fiscal will do that. So, uh, Bob, you worked over in London. You know the London system very well. Did they show everybody the way it's supposed to be done this week? Because they had the Bank of England come up with a rate cut, and they brought out their budget at the same time. It seemed to be quite coordinated. Uh, I thought that the response from the Bank of England and the joint uh, presentation from Governor Carney and Governor-elect Bailey was uh, very thoughtful, um, very effective. I think it will. I think it will be very effective, um, and um, I think both um, uh, allowing one of the buffers uh, to be removed from the banks so that they can get more lending into the real economy. Uh, I thought their liquidity measures, um, and if you think back to the financial crisis in 2008, those types of things weren't done at that time. So. I think it is helpful, but I'll come back to the point Rick and I have been making, and now Christine Lagarde, um, we need fiscal stimulus as well. Uh, what about the backing off on some of the reserve requirements of the banks? Because the, the <coughs> Bank of England also yeah. did that. There's talk about yeah. that here as well. I mean, everybody think, th I think, thinks it was a good thing in 2008, what we did, make the yep. banks stronger. Yep. We need them right now. But should we be backing off some for the time being? Yeah, I mean, the regulatory dynamic is really significant. You think about what happened in the, uh, the off-the-run Treasury market. I've never seen that before. 
the bid ask spread in some of the off the run treasuries was multiple points. Mm -hmm. That is a that is a function of the banking system getting gummed up. You look at companies that are drawn on their bank lines, <clears throat> et cetera. When the banks don't have the ability to get in there, you need to do that. And by the way, it can be in a short term nature. You don't need to do permanent change, but you need to bridge the dynamic where you're getting more liquidity in the system and you're getting a better functioning environment. Some regulatory relief would be really helpful. Is liquidity more important than actually the interest rate right at the moment? For example, for the Fed, are they better off really just injecting dollars into the system? Hundred percent. And I think uh, uh, my opinion, just one of many opinions, is we used a bullet we didn't need to use with the rate cut here um, recently. Um, I don't think that uh, Governor Powell wants to go to negative interest rates. I don't think the UK wants to go to negative interest rates. And we used a bullet. What is really impressive is uh, the bazooka they used in the repo markets. And, you know, one of the businesses that we've invested in, South Street Securities, is an independent um, uh, broker dealer, a non bank holding company that does US Treasury and mortgage repo. Uh, I see in that business the liquidity in the short end of the market has never been more robust in, I think, since 2008 and 2009 than it is now. As you'll recall, David, that during um, Dodd Frank, there were changes to open market operations that the New York Fed uh, could operate in. And a lot of that is being. Um, um, kind of taken back a little bit, and we're seeing much more activity from the Fed uh, to ensure that liquidity in the repo markets. And I think, you know, for the functioning of the short end of the curve, I think it's enormously helpful. And I think you're spot on. I think that's been more important than the than the rate cut. So the Fed did act this week to inject some liquidity, but was it enough? It, yes. I mean, that was <laughs> that it was, was a bazooka. It was, it was, it was, <laughs> it was, uh, was awe inspiring in terms of the amount they did. And listen, when you put that sort of liquidity in, you know, you were starting to see pressures in the last couple of days in the mortgage market. Listen, the mortgage market, when you bring interest rates down, mortgage rates are supposed to come down in a parallel way, if not more so. Mortgage rates actually were moving higher. Why was that the case? The system is gummed up. You needed to provide better funding, which, was, which happened. You need to provide better liquidity. And the other thing that I don't think people consider enough, when you put liquidity in the system, it takes pressure off the dollar. We operate in a global financial system. When you take pressure off the dollar, it, take, it makes it easier for emerging markets. So let's emerging markets go and enact policy on their, on the, on their own. That is a really big deal. Liquidity gets in the system, and it's got, it's got a real velocity to it, and they addressed it, and they had to do it. But you were seeing some cracks in the mechanism, and you can't buy other assets. You can't buy equities. You can't buy credit until the core asset, the risk-free rate, is solved.